The last female Yangtze softshell river turtle was found dead in April. Here's everything you need to know. I've already talked about this taxa a little bit, but the Manga Bay, which is an amazing conservation news organization, recently posted an article, I uh, believe yesterday it looks like, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to, one, talk about the kind of what happening, what is going on with this taxa, uh, as well as some of the conservation implications. During this video, I also want to talk about the legend uh, that this softshell turtle is probably directly related to. Uh, so, the Yangtze uh, softshell turtle, I actually have uh, better pictures here. It is the world's largest, if not the largest, one of the largest freshwater turtle species. Uh, it is absolutely massive, and it's found in, well, only a few areas, most notably Vietnam. So this species has already been on the brink of extinction for uh, many years. There have been captive breeding efforts that unfortunately were not successful. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to my Instagram post because I just have all the information already there. Um, so the last female, and I'm not going to say that I get any of these pronunciations correct, uh, the last female is found at Dongma Lake in Hanoi. Uh, they really do not know the cause of death. A necropsy is underway. I don't know if that's been updated since I posted this because this was from last week. Um, but the turtle in question was Rafita Swanoi, otherwise known as the giant Yangtze softshell turtle. And this is really, really tragic. We knew that there were a few males in the river and there's also a zoo. Um, I believe I have it here. Uh, yeah, Su Zhao Zoo in China. <laughs> Um, they also have two males that were there, and they used to have a female, a breeding female, trying to breed, released in the wild, you know, basic habitat, uh, habitat, species conservation program. But unfortunately, that one died in captivity. Um, and this is more than just a, something I really want to get into, uh, actually I can show you based on my current research, uh, I'm looking at the world's turtles. Uh, that is a chapter of my research, so naturally Rafidus is in here. And something that is really, really important that I, I try to get across is that not all species are the same, okay? And what I'm going to show you is a phylogeny. So these are all of the turtle species. Phylogeny, I'm not going to get too in-depth here. Basically, it just shows us how taxa are related to one another. Uh, so we can see here, if we zoom in uh, very far, um, realizing that the font is not uh, big enough, but anyways, it'll show us that things like uh, Elysia rodinii is closely related to Elysia schultzi and Nova, Novi Guinea. Not going to do pronunciations here. But if we look for the Rafidus genus, um, and it might be Rafidus, I don't know how to pronounce things. Um, I just read um, right here. Rufidus is kind of in a clade all of its own. So there's only two or three species, depending on where you delimit them. Um, and they are in their own clade. There's only a few of them. What this means is there really isn't many comparable species to this incredible giant turtle. Uh, the closest things we have are the Apollonies, the softshell turtles that we have here in the States. So like uh, Apollone spinifera is one that uh, I know. The spiny softshell turtles, I've kept them. I've found them in the wild. They're in, native in Texas and invasive here in California. Um, but these are the closest living relatives, and even then, there's not that many of those. So if we look at the branch of a phylogenetic tree, again, this one right here, this group is very distinct from the other turtles. I mean, we can tell that just by looking at it. This is not uh, a readier slider. This is something that is encapsulating about 40 million years. Um, I should say the Rafidus is capturing about 40 million years of distinct evolutionary history. So when we lose this species to extinction, we lose not just a uh, species on a, on a map or on a checklist. We lose that 40 million years of evolutionary history. And uh, the way I'm getting 40 million years is by looking at the phylogeny and looking at uh, where Rafidus comes through. This, this phylogeny doesn't show branch lengths if you're nerdy curious like me, but uh, it shows that they diverged from other turtles about 40 million years ago. So that's where I get that claim from. Now, 
there, of course, have been uh, captive breeding efforts. Uh, they have tried, they have not been successful. And from researching this article, uh, in the 20 years that they've been surveying around the lake where this female was found, they never found any eggs, never found any. So the species was not repopulating to the best of our knowledge. Um, and what's unfortunate here is that there aren't any other known females in the wild. There absolutely could be one. Uh, there are some really uncorroborated reports that people disagree on, um, but there are no known females. <coughs> and with the techniques that we have nowadays, they've actually used eDNA, environmental DNA, to detect males in other lakes. This is essentially taking a sample of water and sampling the DNA to look for specific taxa. Um, the, the thought is, let's say, the, the turtle pees in the water, you know, I, it could be other things, it could be skin cells floating around, it could be any type of DNA from the animal. Um, we can detect that in the water through environmental DNA. It's a super fascinating technology, and uh, it has been used to show that there is um, a male, uh, at least one known male, in a, uh, in a few of the rivers and in a, in a lake. Now, what I want to focus on here is that the conservation impacts are huge. You know, we're losing an, an incredibly distinct species. Um, we're losing something that is in you know, important ecologically. I mean, it's no doubt that it has its role being so distinct in the ecology. But I really want to focus on the fact that when we lose taxa, we also lose culture. And that is extremely well represented with this specific taxa. And it's through this, the legend of Huan Kim Lake in the Hanoi Old Quarter. This is a legend dating back to, um, oh gosh, uh, well, Ming Dynasty of China era. Uh, so I had the date, I believe. Um, I need to know this. 15th century. And according to legend, there was a golden turtle in Huan Kim Lake, and it gifted a sword to Emperor uh, Lao, Li, or Li Loi. Li Loi? Hmm. Um, I've, I'm, I'm going to be very honest here that the sources have not been very consistent on if it was the emperor or a warrior, so if uh, you know the actual legend, please correct me. Um, but he was given a weapon by a golden turtle in the lake in order to drive back the invaders from the Ming Dynasty of China. Um, it said that it would give him the strength of 1,000 men bringing victory, and he was able to vanquish the invading Chinese army. Um, so there are incredible depictions of this. It was a uh, magical sword, made him into a giant. And while this depiction here shows a tortoise, it is actually believed that the golden turtle of the lake was a Rafidus, was this Yangtze River turtle. Uh, there is some debate taxonomically if it was exactly this species. Uh, I'm not going to get into it because it seems like it's mainly this one. Uh, but regardless, if it was this species or a sister's taxa, it's still cool and it's still a taxa that is culturally important. I think that within the context of biodiversity conservation, we, uh, we being biologists, conservationists, nature nerds, tend to get really focused on the pure ecological aspect of organisms. We over-focus on what an individual species brings to an ecosystem. And in doing so, we're forgetting that human element. You know, animals across all cultures, across all types of people, across all walks of life are important to people. We have how many stories and legends and tales that revolve around animals. It is insane how much of human culture is influenced by animals. And plants, for that matter. I forget. Wildlife includes plants. I still feel like that's wrong, but I just found that out. So whenever we're talking about conservation, yes, we talk about the monetary value of keeping this organism in there for ecotourism. You know, rhinos bring in millions of dollars of ecotourism. We talk about its roles as an ecosystem engineer or as basal to the food web. Uh, beavers creating dams have a massive influence on all the organisms around them because they're ecosystem engineers. But we often ignore the cultural side of conservation. We ignore that cultural argument when it comes to conservation. 
And when you make that connection to someone and you say, well, this taxa that you're harming is actually incredibly important to you. It actually holds stories that your grandparents and their grandparents told you. And I think by ignoring those stories, we ultimately lose more taxa like this. So the, you know, is there hope for this species? Probably not. The term that we would say is functionally extinct. That means they still exist. There are still species, maybe in zoos, maybe one or two in the wild. But it's very, very likely that when those die, that's it. Gone forever. With improved genetic material, improved uh, genetic resources and genetic tools, we might be able to artificially implant uh, the genetic material of one of these Yangtze softshell turtles into a surrogate or into a, uh, you know, for, for lack of nuance, a test tube baby type of uh, situation. Uh, there are these artificial wombs called biobags. We'll actually show a picture because um, I just think they're really, really cool. But um, we shouldn't rely on these tools. So this is an illustration of a biobag. Uh, it's essentially a Ziploc bag with uh, that acts as a womb. Uh, an artificial womb so you can put place a species in there typically something cloned um and I, I thought they had the actual picture on here um because there are real pictures of it yeah here we go so we have these tools we have this incredible technology that is coming over the horizon but we shouldn't rely on them so yep i just wanted to uh well talk about this incredible taxa relay the news that unfortunately we're losing something incredibly important and yeah get the word out if you like this if you have a story you want to see covered if you want something more out of these videos let me know i'm developing these i'm going them completely ad lib i have no idea what i'm doing so please let me know and if you could share and if you're new here subscribe i'd love to talk to you have a good day